I've got another budget night vision monocular comparison for you guys. This time we are comparing an AGM Global Vision Wolf 14 monocular versus, again, a standard PVS 14. You can buy a Wolf 14 brand new on Amazon for like 1500 bucks and have it shipped to your door within a couple of days. So it is one of the easiest and cheapest real night vision devices you can get your hands on. This one is the cheapest unit that they sell. It has a Generation 2 Plus intensifier tube. It is green phosphor. And the way that AGM grades their tubes is by so-called levels. So level one has the least number of blemishes, level two, level three, increasing number and size of blemishes. This one is an NL3, so it's green phosphor, level three, which makes it in theory the worst quality of tube that they sell. This one costs just a hair under $1,500. If you step up to the level two, you'll have theoretically fewer and smaller blemishes. You'll pay maybe an extra $100 or $200. Same thing if you step up to level one. They also sell these in a white phosphor version. Again, it's generation two plus, not generation three. Those usually cost about 200 more than the equivalent green phosphor versions. AGM does not supply a spec sheet with any of these devices, as far as I can tell, and they also don't have guarantees of performance level. Their website can give you a general idea of what the resolution should be, but as far as the stats that you might expect to see on a PVS-14, like FOM or signal-to-noise ratio, EBI, halo, any of that stuff, that is not on the spec sheet included with the device. All it is is a pass-fail quality control sheet. As for the device itself, right away you can tell that this is way bigger than a PVS-14. And if you remember from the last video that we did, the PVS-14 is ever so slightly larger than the ATN Corp NVM-14. The NVM-14 is ever so slightly smaller than a PVS-14, but it does weigh basically exactly the same as the PVS-14. The Wolf 14 is not only significantly larger, it is also heavier. And the reason for that is that the Wolf uses a 43 millimeter intensifier tube, the same style as used in the PVS-7 biocular night vision, as opposed to the 37 millimeter intensifier tube that's used in the PVS-14 and the NVM-14. The 43 millimeter intensifier tubes used in the PVS-7s are non-inverting, meaning they don't flip the image. So in order to have the image the right side up for your eye, there needs to be a more complicated lens assembly to the rear of the intensifier tube. So that probably explains the additional length and the extra size of the intensifier tube probably explains the additional girth. The PVS-14 by itself weighs 11.5 ounces. That's with my little uh, ghetto lanyard mod attached to it. The Wolf 14 by itself weighs about 15.7 ounces. Granted, this does have a lens cap and a rear rubber eyepiece, but you get the idea. It is heavier. The rubber eye cup thing is completely useless, so I took that off, and just for the hell of it, I took off the front lens cap, and now we are at 15.2 ounces. So not only is the Wolf about 4 ounces heavier, it's also a lot longer, so that weight is farther forward, which is not going to feel super great when it's on your head. Once again, we can see a difference in the size of the lenses there on these devices. The official stats on all three of the devices, the Wolf 14, the PVS 14, and the NVM 14, is that they all use the same lens, which is a 27 millimeter with, I believe, a 1.2 f-stop. Like with the NVM, the battery compartment is towards the rear, and the power switch is on the front. In this case, this has a simple push-button power switch. Click it in to turn it on. Click it in again to turn it off. Some of these units are supposedly equipped with manual gain, and in that case, the power switch doubles as a gain control knob. That's not the case for this one. I'm not sure which of these actually have a manual gain and which ones do not. This one also has a strange lens assembly at the front. It's kind of hard to see for some reason. At the front is the light sensor here, and this is the IR illuminator. This piece here is actually just a focusing lens on a little articulating arm. If you swing that over so that it covers the IR illuminator, it provides a focusing effect to give you a little more range on the IR illuminator. The IR illuminator is turned on with this soft push button on the side. Click it once to turn it on. When it's on, if you click and hold, it will jump to a higher power mode, sort of. It's a little bit finicky. Sometimes it just turns off. Kind of hard to get it to work, but when it does work, it is a noticeably brighter illumination. Like the NVM 14, the front ring has quite a lot of travel to adjust the focus. Also, it seems like it's easily possible to go past infinite like it is on the NVM, whereas the PVS-14 has a very short amount of travel and then it locks into place on what is essentially infinite focus. I don't know what exists past infinite, but seeing as you can focus this 
and the NVM14 so far out that even the stars in the sky become blurry again, I kind of wonder what exactly it is you're looking at. On the rear is the diopter adjustment. This has a little rubber ring, which ironically makes it harder to spin the diopter because sometimes the ring spins and not the actual diopter adjustment. You kind of have to squeeze or pinch as you rotate it in order to actually control the diopter. Once again, like the NVM14, the Wolf 14 uses these quick rail attachments one on either side. Again, these are really difficult to find accessories for. A lot of people probably who end up buying these use a JDAPT plate so that they can use a standard USGIJ arm. This is a swing arm made by Bearing Optics. It has the standard band interface at the top. There's a push button to allow the swing arm to move from two positions, basically all the way to one side or all the way to the other. Interestingly enough, this does not actually work with the Wolf 14. The Wolf 14 is just too fat, too girthy to actually clip properly into this. So this would work with the MUM 14, GT 14, the NVM 14. The design of this makes me think it's a technical improvement over the standard tripod mounting hole interface. The mounting interface actually lives up to the name Quick Rail. You just slide this on, spin the little knob, it's spring loaded locks into place. You can spin it either direction. That's a lot faster and looks a lot more stable than the tripod mounting hole that you have on the PVS-14. There are other versions of this out there that have a different shape and curvature of the actual arm portion. Those may work with the Wolf 14. This is the adapter that I talked about in the last video. I ordered multiple of them from different websites. This is the only one that actually ever shipped to me. So maybe those other websites are very, very slow, or maybe they're just completely broken. At this point, I've already tried to cancel those orders. A brief interlude here to talk about mounting options for the Wolf 14. As I said, I tried using the bearing optic swing arm, and it just curves too sharply to fit around the massive body of the Wolf, no matter which direction you try to come at it from, it's just not going to fit. I also tried using the JDAPT plate and a standard USGIJ arm. I tried it in every possible configuration, and there is no way to make that work. Wow, this is just not going to work. I'm not a big fan of the JDAT plate to begin with because the curvature of the J arm is almost a little too sharp for it and it doesn't play nicely with the anti rotation tab on the J arm. So maybe if you modified your J arm by cutting the anti rotation tab off of it, you could get a little more mileage out of it, but that's just going to make it spin more easily and that's already frustrating enough as it is. I tried getting the Wolf 14 lined up with my eye using the JDAPT and a swing arm on two different helmets and it just wasn't happening. So what are your options? Basically the only options you have are to either buy a headgear kit from AGM or to buy one of their mounts that works with a quick rail attachment. The headgear is basically their version of the atrocious skull crusher that you can get for a PVS-14. Those are pretty miserable and they preclude you from wearing a helmet so I really wouldn't recommend that. They're also really expensive. You can get a surplus USGI Skull Crusher for like probably under 50 bucks. The one from AGM that works with the Wolf 14 costs like 250 bucks. As far as the mount goes, it's even more expensive. I think they cost like 270 bucks. And I also cannot even guarantee that they work with a standard NVG shroud. I'm not going to bother ordering one of these because I already waited like six weeks to get that stupid bearing optics arm. So I'm not going to go through that again. 270 bucks might not be outrageously expensive given that it replaces both the mount and the swing arm assembly. So whereas you might spend 100 bucks on a surplus Rhino 2 and 50 bucks on a surplus J arm, instead you spend 270 bucks on something that replaces both. That extra cost though, again, pretty much obliterates any advantage that the Wolf 14 would have over the NVM 14, even assuming you weren't able to buy NVM 14s for the exact same price as Wolf's right now. This thing is just too big and too heavy and too difficult to mount. When it comes to performance of the Wolf 14, it's basically about as good as you can expect from cheap Generation 2 Plus night vision. Again, the performance of a night vision device is pretty much completely dependent on the intensifier tube inside, so mostly what we can talk about here when comparing this to another device is just the monocular housing itself. So judged on the merits of the monocular housing itself, the Wolf 14 is pretty much no good. It's bigger and heavier than either an NVM14 or a PVS14, and it's compatible with even fewer of the mounting accessories than the NVM14 is. As of this recording, you can actually order an NVM14 with a Generation 2 Plus tube directly from ATN Corp for $1,495, so basically exactly the price of a Wolf 14. I can't say definitively, but I'm reasonably sure that the performance of the intensifier tube between the two devices would be essentially the same. They both are Generation 2 Plus, so they're not great. However, they are significantly better than digital night vision like the Psionics Aurora or Generation 1 night vision. 
So if you can get an NVM14 for the same price as a Wolf 14, you should absolutely go with the NVM14. Generally, I think the NVM14 with an equivalent performance tube will cost about 200 bucks more than a Wolf 14, and for that 200 bucks, it's definitely worth the upgrade. So there are not a lot of scenarios where you should go with the Wolf 14 unless you really, really have to, or if you're limited based on perhaps where you live. We'll do a video at another time comparing generation one, two plus, three, and digital night vision. What I can say right now is that the performance of the generation two plus intensifier tube is decent. It's not gonna keep pace with a generation three device. Not only is the light sensitivity quite a lot lower, the resolution is also a lot lower. So the image is just not gonna be as bright. It's not gonna be as clear. It's still better performer than digital night vision because not only does it perform better in extremely low light conditions, you also don't have viewfinder lag or latency or frame rate or severe battery life issues to worry about. It's also way, way better than generation one night vision, which basically doesn't work at all unless you have supplemental IR illumination. Generation two night vision does not require the use of an illuminator all the time. However, if you actually wanna see something that's a little farther away, or you wanna get a clear look at a target to identify it, or you wanna navigate in a dark area, you are going to need some supplemental illumination. If you've already got one of these and you're wondering if it's worth upgrading to an NVM14, the answer is probably no. I mean, if you've got one of these and it's working for you, go ahead and just stick with it. The NVM14 housing doesn't seem quite as rugged as the Wolf 14 housing but it's a lot smaller and it doesn't use the same intensifier tube, so it's not really a direct comparison. I think these are solid units, but because they're basically the same price as something that's completely better, there's almost no reason to buy one anymore. All right, that's all we got for now. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.